Hi guys, my name is Diana from Spectre Spectators and today I have a short video for you on ghost tours do's and don'ts. If you're going on your first ghost tour and you're not sure what to expect, then this video might be helpful. After conducting a couple of investigations and attending a couple of ghost tours, we've noticed a couple of things. There were things that we liked and that made the experience more meaningful and there was things that we disliked and just made us want to shut down and leave. So in order for people to have a more positive experience, we've come up with a list of do's and don'ts during a ghost tour. Now this is in the perspective of the person attending the ghost tour, not as in the investigator. That may be a video later on. So let's get started. Number one, be respectful. Whether you're attending because you're a believer or you're attending because you're a skeptic, and you want to see something, you want to feel something, just be respectful. When you become disrespectful to others attending or to the spirits, this can be something that's a negative experience for everybody. Don't have a side conversation. It's going to be really hard to hear already. And depending on the location, if you're outside or if you're inside a building that echoes a lot, it's going to be a distraction. If it's something that you have to tell somebody right next to you, then you might want to use your phone and just send it as a text or write it out and then they can read it. During the tour you will have a time and a place to have a sidebar conversation uh, so just wait till then. As far as being disrespectful to spirits, whether you believe in the paranormal or not, you're already there so don't ruin the experience for everybody else. Challenging or cussing out a spirit is not only disrespectful, but dangerous. Bottom line is don't be rude to the living or to the dead. Number two, participation. This is huge. More than likely, the group conducting the investigation is going to have all kinds of gadgets. They're going to let you borrow them and you can basically use them. Use the gear to feel more involved and you never know what you can catch. Whether it's dowsing rods, EMF detectors, or SLS cameras, use them. And if they go off, speak up. That can lead the investigation or the ghost tour in a different direction. Dowsing rods might not look very high tech, but they're very effective. One of the best tours that we attended had very minimal technology. So don't feel like you need crazy amount of gadgets or really expensive gadgets in order to have a good experience. Besides the gadgets, you might be asked to ask a couple of questions. You probably might not know everybody attending, but everybody's going to be as shy or as embarrassed as you are. So you guys are already there. This is what you're going for. Might as well participate. Make sure you keep the flow going, because if not, it's just silence. And then it gets weird. Really quick. <laughs> so as the questions are starting to come to you, just make sure you have a question in mind. And if somebody beats you to it, have a backup question. <laughs> Just make sure that whatever you're asking is relevant to what's been coming through. And there's nothing wrong with repeating questions like how many spirits are with us or why are you still here. In a tour that we attended, they actually passed around a flashlight like a talking stick. People would stay quiet for a couple of minutes and we would forget who would be next. In a group of 20 people, and it's very dark, you can't really see who's next. Number three, use your phone. Take pictures, videos, use a voice recorder. You can always go back and review your pictures or your recordings. You'll be surprised at what you capture. We have literally captured something every time. Even if it's something small, it's something that you can remember again. Even if it's one picture or a voice, it's so exciting to capture it. Number four, listen to your body. If something doesn't feel right, leave. In a tour that we attended, there was a group that was being very disrespectful towards a spirit. I'll insert a clip. The energy that began to surround them was very negative and we don't mess with any of that. So we actually opted out to leave. On another occasion, I felt very dizzy and I became super nauseous. I actually had to run out to the nearest restaurant and get it together. 
once I came back, the psychic medium um, that was actually leading the tour told us that we were in a very small space and there was a lot of spirits and it was crowded. So a spirit actually ended up going through me and it took my energy and their energy away, which is why I became so nauseous. So why did I run? I logically didn't know, but I listened to my body. I felt like I had to go away and I did. I felt better, regained my energy and I came back. Without knowing, I trusted my instincts and I ran out of the crowd without seeing one. Going along with listening to your body, in my opinion, I think that technology can sometimes hinder an investigation. It can disturb the flow by having to switch equipment, turning it on and off. You can get so focused on trying out different things that you can miss out on hearing something or feeling something. Make sure you pay attention to all of your senses. Technology, in my view, should be something that's an affirmation to what you're feeling. There are tools that help somebody's eyes, ears, etc. Again, the best tour that we attended actually just had dowsing rods, an EMF detector, and an app that they had developed. A psychic medium actually led the tour, and all of the information that she was given out was actually confirmed by the technology. And it was actually really amazing. And you can feel how real the connection was to the spirit world. Technology is amazing, but don't focus just on that. With that being said, watching some investigators constantly say that they're feeling something, but not being backed up by technology is extremely annoying. You can trust what you're feeling, but you need to verify. The connection and confirmation will make it that much more meaningful. And number five, be prepared. Take the appropriate clothing and supplies needed. Make sure you read the code of conduct or the rules for the location or the ghost tour that you're going to attend. If it's outside, consider the weather, the location, the time of day, and the remoteness of the locations. Some of these locations don't have any electricity, running water, restrooms, or they could be in the middle of nowhere. Make sure you take a flashlight, a sweater, a folding chair, a camera. This is all up to you. But having no sweater in 40 degree weather with an outside tour is not a great idea. That happened to me. You do want to be prepared, but be mindful that you're going to be carrying all of this. So travel light, but make sure you have everything you need. And bonus, not everything is paranormal. Always think logically and see if something can be explained. If you're using a camera, be mindful of glare, insects, your environment, like people or cars passing by, and make sure to avoid whispering if you want to catch an EVP. Well, that wraps this one up. Thank you and good luck on your next adventure. Stay safe.